there comes to be a point in most Canon photographers' journeys where you scrape together enough pocket change to buy yourself your very own luxury series lens. And today happens to be the day that I receive mine. What is up guys? This is your boy Bruce back again with another video. I know it's been a very long time, but rest assured I am back. I am better than ever before and I can't wait to show you guys the projects that we're working on. But without further ado, today we'll be focused on the new lens that I picked up. This is the Canon RF 100mm macro. And for those who don't know, macro photography is essentially photography that focuses on uh, small subjects. So think bugs, jewelry, textures of things, etc. And yeah, I'm excited to put it through its paces. I'll be going out with my best friend today to a metro park named Kensington. So it's pretty much a giant forest with the lake around it. Uh, and it also has a few beaches as well. But yeah, I'll be testing out the portrait side of things and hopefully we can find some critters along the way and some interesting plants as well. And I could capture those too, show you guys what, what it looks like. So I'll give you guys my, my thoughts afterwards and we'll see how I like it. But let's get it. All right, y'all. So we are out here at Kensington Metro Park. We got my best friend with us. She's kind of in the dark right now, but she will be our model today. Hi. We're Hi, doing everybody. A, <laughs> we're doing a fairy shoot, fairy theme. So she definitely is going to exceed expectations with this lovely fit. And yeah. It's going to be great. Can't wait to show y'all the results. So we got the... Godox light out here. I got the Godox V1. I'll link the Octobox is called in the description below. If any of you guys are interested, this will be like my first time using it in a portrait session. So we'll see how it turns out. Uh, as you see, we got a lot of natural lighting right now, but the only purpose it'll solve will be fill light. So to kind of evenly expose her a little bit better, but yeah, so let's get it. I just want to say wow I'm very satisfied with how these shots turned out but in this shot here I really can't find anything bad about it of course I applied a few edits and tweaks to make the light more evenly exposed but the quality the detail the sharpness the softness of the background compression 10 out of 10 and in this shot here pretty much the exact same um she just changed her pose up a little bit but Wow, 100 millimeters might just be one of my new favorite focal lengths for portrait photography. Check out the detail on his grasshopper and not even just on a grasshopper but you can literally see it almost looks like dust but i know it's probably not dust outside it's more so maybe like dandelions broken up into bits on this leaf under him and like the little hairs of the plant under him but you can really make out every intricate detail on this grasshopper's body and i think that's insane but that just shows you the the power that a macro lens has and a macro lens of this capability. So overall, really impressed. Here are 
are some shots that I capture in direct sunlight, which I know is usually a no in most photography, but I was curious to see how it turned out and I was very pleased with these shots as well. All right, y'all, so we just wrapped up our shoot. Um, you guys have obviously seen what the shots look like because I know I edited them in, but I think the shots turned out great from what we saw straight out of camera. Uh, the bugs are really against us today. We've been getting torn up out here, but I feel like it was all worth it. Had a great time shooting, and yeah, great lens overall. I'll give you guys my final thoughts on it once I get back home, but I'll let my bestie here close out. Yeah, I hope you guys liked the video and the photos. It was really fun. Um, modeling for Bruce, I'm not a professional, so uh, <laughs> I'm just here for the geez. love of my bestie. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and turn your post notifications on. Yes, so do that. So you will stay tuned for his next video. Peace. Bye. All right, guys, so we're back in the lab, back home. It's the next day, and honestly, our shoot turned out great yesterday. I couldn't be any more happy with the results. Very, very happy. And I feel like that was mainly thanks to this lens. So really am enjoying it. I really like it. I feel like the autofocus system is very great. One of the best that Canon has ever put into a lens at this point. And if you didn't like it, you can easily switch over to manual focus here. And the manual focus ring is nice and smooth. So I use this a lot, not yesterday, but in general, I use that a lot on this lens as well. When I'm taking pictures of very tiny bugs because you do get to a certain point where it's like, they say that this lens in particular struggles with, I wanna say it's called focus breathing, but I'm not 100% on the technical term, but essentially what I've noticed is that, let's say I have an autofocus and I'm focused on an ant in that ants in one spot right but the ants so small and i'm so huge or all of this is so huge that me moving let's say a centimeter a millimeter a little bit backwards would throw the entire focus off essentially and it seems like it does that a lot so if you had it on a tripod and then you try to autofocus probably would go crazy probably would nail that focus every single time. But I find that if you have an autofocus and you're taking a picture of those tiny subjects, you might want to switch over to manual. But overall, the autofocus still is incredible and still is one of the best systems I've seen so far. Uh, I tested out the spherical aberration control. And honestly, I didn't really care much for that function. I felt like it pretty much just simulates a softening effect on your subject so I did it with a plant and on both sides of the spherical aberration you can take it to minus a few stops or plus a few stops I felt like it didn't really help the image at all and if I wanted to do those types of effects I could just do it in like Photoshop or Lightroom or I could even buy like a diffusion filter or pro mist filter and put that on the end of the lens if I wanted to you know capture that effect so I felt like it was kind of a waste for Canon to put that function into this lens and it probably did make it a little bit more expensive. But other than that though, very amazing lens. Like I said, solid build quality. Uh, I had this hanging from my neck on my camera. So it was kind of swinging around, not really bumping into anything, but just swinging around. And of course it was fine from that. Uh, no scratches or anything like that, but definitely solid it's also weatherproof so if you want to take it out into the rain you can or if you're out on the shoot and it starts raining you don't have to really worry about anything going wrong supposedly but yeah solid lens i'm glad that this is my first l series lens very pleased with the results i'm not one that really cares about names or titles of things i really just want to see if it helps me create whatever art that i have envisioned in my head and i felt like our my vision for our shoot yesterday was made into a reality because of the lens so i really appreciated that and i feel like if you're in the market for one and you're thinking about it maybe rent it for a few days if you have like a local camera shop that has one but if not if you if you really can envision yourself 
used in this lens and let's say a lot of portrait situations or macro situ situations why not you know and i'll probably even test out some landscape scenarios with this lens too just to see what it can do but optically i feel like it's beautiful all of the shots came out lifelike very clean awesome lens man i'll be sure to throw up some shots of the bugs that i've been capturing around my yard too so that way you guys can see you know some more samples of what this lens can do But other than that, I'll catch you guys next time. It's your boy Bruce, and I'm out.